Hey, what's up? This your boy, Big Man. You already know what it is, man. So let's get right to it. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about some news about Honeycomb Brazy. Now, Honeycomb Brazy has been arrested again, and he was brought into custody and arrested on a gun charge. Now, the case seems a little weird, man. And it's possible that Honeycomb Brazy was maybe even set up in this situation. Now, I'm not sure 100% if this was a setup or an inside job, but everything on Honeycomb Brazy's side, seems like he tried to do everything right in this situation, but somehow he still ended up in jail. Now, for those of you who need a recap, Honeycomb Brazy is a rapper from the Mobile, Alabama area, right? Gained a lot of fame and recognition because of some of his more crazy lyrics about shootings and things that have happened in his personal life, plus the backstory to boot, right? He's had his beefs with Finesse two times, as well as his beefs with other artists in the rap game that are closely connected to Mob Ties, right? Now, he's essentially had it out with Mob Ties, and then they've come together and said, forget it, we're going to put that to the, to the side. But at the same time that he was dead in his beef with Mob Ties and Jay Prince and everybody, it seemed like bad luck struck and he was arrested again. Now, we're getting more information about the arrest, and in the information Concerning the arrest, it seems like Honeycomb Brazy might have been trying to do everything right in this situation for once because we're so used to rappers doing the wrong thing, knowingly out there wrong, either got a gun, some drugs, something crazy going on with them, and them getting locked up. But based on the testimony in court just the other day, it seems like Honeycomb Brazy was already under the watchful eye of the feds. Now, Honeycomb Brazy has possibly been under the watchful eye of the feds since back when his parents, or I should say his grandparents, lost their life, man. In 2021, he had one of the craziest cases in all of hip-hop, where his grandparents had unfortunately lost their lives in a house fire, seeing both of them being burned to death, and Honeycomb Brazy getting some blame and also be in a position where he couldn't do anything to rectify it. He was under a lot of scrutiny from local law enforcement, and it seemed to rub everybody the wrong way who was trying to solve the case. But let's break down this situation that he's got going on right now, and some of the things that came out in court yesterday regarding this gun case. Because for most people, we had already counted Honeycomb Brazy out. We said, all right, it's a wrap, man. He's a done deal. You know what I mean? Another arrest after just getting off of this little bid that he had, and which seemed like a blessing, and he's right back in jail, they're going to throw the book at him. But maybe, just maybe, he might make it out of this one all right as well. But before we get to that, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And man, let's get it. Okay, so let's look at this news story from the local news there in Mobile, Alabama. And it says, agents were waiting on rapper Honeycomb Brazy before traffic stop in Creola, testimony suggests. So there was a federal agent that took the stand in the preliminary hearings for this whole Honeycomb Brazy situation. They're trying to figure out if he's going straight back to prison or not. And in that, they're going to need testimony for the law enforcement who were involved, right? So they're talking to this federal agent who is oddly involved in the case. And they're wondering why, you know, he was even there. Because it seems like the, the traffic stop would have been something from the local law enforcement. But there's also a news story that kind of breaks down the details. So let's check out a clip real quick. Determining prosecutors have enough evidence for a grand jury to consider a gun charge against mobile-born rapper Honeycomb Brazy. These are charges that come from a traffic stop on I-65 in Criola last month. Brazy, whose real name is Nishan Jones, was a passenger in a Cadillac Escalade with two people he hired to provide security. All right, the first red flag that you probably heard in that short little clip is the fact that Honeycomb Brazy was allegedly traveling with his security. So in that case, why in the world would he be the person catching a gun charge? If he has armed security in the vehicle with him, shouldn't they be the ones who actually have control of the, of the firearm and take control of the firearm and take responsibility for the firearm? But let's continue. Prosecutors say the three men in the car, though, were not legally allowed to have firearms. FBI agent testifying Jones was in the middle seat in arm's reach of a pistol on the floor. The agent testifying law enforcement pulled over that vehicle for a traffic violation, but they'd been expecting Jones based on social media posts. They say Jones was a venturist because he was a subject of a number of investigations. The defense attorney, Josh Briskman, 
saying his client was the victim of a shooting a few years ago and for good reason wanted protection. He says he's curious the FBI is participating in a traffic enforcement. Now, as you heard from the news in that clip, that basically Honeycomb Brazy's attorney responded in court that it was kind of odd that they were pulled over by federal authorities while Honeycomb Brazy was riding with his security. Now, the weird part about this is a special agent actually testified in court and talked about why they were watching Honeycomb Brazy and gave further details. Now, a special agent by the name of Evan Fisher testified at a federal preliminary hearing that he was with the Mobile County Sheriff's deputies when he was had spotted a Cadillac Escalade on the W.K. Wilson Bridge on Interstate 65 on December 18th. He testified that the sport utility vehicle was following another vehicle too closely, remained too long in the passing lane, and had tinted windows. So all three of those things are different uh, traffic violations. And it goes on to say that all three were traffic violations that gave cause to pull the Cadillac over in Creola. Now, Fisher testified, and because it was fully armored and the driver was wearing a bulletproof vest, he testified that law enforcement officers conducted the stop at gunpoint and found two guns inside. Now, Honeycomb Brazy was moving out here right. He knows that he has issues in his hometown. He knows about the things that have happened in his past and the fact that he's high profile due to the fact he's in the rap game. So as he's moving around, he's in a fully armored vehicle and some of the people in there are wearing bulletproof vests or whatnot. Now, at this point, I'm pretty sure from... Honeycomb Brazy's point of view, he probably thinks that, yo, this is in somebody else's responsibility. They're the ones riding around in security. I'm just supposed to sit in the car and be safe. Now, while that federal agent is on the stand, Honeycomb Brazy's attorney in cross-examination brought up the fact that it was odd that, yes, that they had pulled him over and also was talking about the fact that Honeycomb Brazy had did all the right steps, had hi hired a security detail through his management team. I think they're ganging up on him. I really do. I think this is a guy that tried to do everything the right way. His management team hired the security detail. Mr. Jones's safety was at everybody's forefront concern, and uh, they tried to do this in a way where this would be uh, outside the bounds of anything questionable, and it hasn't worked out that way. The judge noting there's a parole hold on Jones based on a state court conviction ordering him to be detained in that federal case. Also, while on the stand, Agent Fisher talked about the fact that Honeycomb Brazy is being looked at in several different investigations, including federal. So it's wild that they've been looking at him and his social media for so long. And Honeycomb Brazy has been carrying on in the rap game as a rapper should. The wild part about it and what makes it feel like it's some sort of setup or he might have a case for getting this thrown out is the fact that he hired what he thought were professionals. And in his testimony, Fisher said this. He testified that he was aware that the two men in the vehicle with Jones, a.k.a. Honeycomb Brazy, had been hired to provide security, but he added that it didn't matter because all three occupants were barred from having firearms. So it seems like he hired some security guards who weren't allowed to have firearms either. And when they pulled Honeycomb Brazy's car over, he was the one sitting in the captain's seat in the middle row, and he said that there was a pistol under the driver's seat where the co-defendant Mason Demetrius Fuller, 31 years old of Mobile, was behind the wheel and an AR-15 on the floor between Jones's seat and the co-defendant Miguel Wayne Hall, 39 years old of Houston in the back row. So it looked like there were several guns in the car and they felt like everybody had access to those guns. So they charged everybody in the car due to the fact that nobody had at the time legal rights to bear arms and everybody in the car had access to the weapons in the car. So this is playing out in a weird way where Honeycomb Brazy looks like he was trying to do the right thing, but it ended up coming and biting him in the end. But what do you guys think about this situation? They also mentioned before we close out that they've been looking closely at his social media, his social media posts and lives. And they're working in tandem with the local law enforcement to monitor Honeycomb Brazy and his actions before this recent arrest, man. So what was it? Was Honeycomb Brazy set up in this situation? 
or did a chance traffic stop lead to this rapper being locked up and possibly seeing a lot of time in jail once again? Now, with that, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And make sure you share this video. And we out of here. Peace.